Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to quickly run through the differences in the three types of crystalloid solutions, the most common ones, normal saline, lactated ringers, and plasmolite. Specifically, what about their composition makes them different from one another, how they affect the body, clear up some misconceptions, and explain when you should or shouldn't use certain solutions. So, let's get started. First and foremost, it's important to remember that IV solutions are medications and should be treated as such. Too much or too little, or even the correct amount, may have major physiologic implications that must be taken into consideration when using them. So, as you can see here on the left side of the screen, I've written down a couple of the normal values that we're going to refer to when looking at each solution. We have our pH, which is physiologically between 7.35 and 7.45. We have serum osmolality, which is about 280 to 295. Sodium, which is 135 to 145. Chloride, 98 to 105. Potassium, 3.5 to 5. And then we have our buffer, which is bicarb. And these are the basic parameters that we're going to look at. And you can see them at the bottom. Uh, we've also, we're also going to talk about magnesium and calcium, and you'll see why they're going to go ahead and come up in a little bit. So let's start with normal saline. And right off the bat, normal saline is a misnomer. There is nothing physiologically normal about normal saline. And that concept alone should serve as a good base for remembering some of this stuff. Normal saline isn't normal. Remember that. First of all, it has a pH of 5.5 which right away should set off alarms as it's an acidic solution when compared to the physiologic pH of 7.4. It has an osmolality of 310, making it hypertonic relative to the blood, which in turn can cause our cells to shrink as they lose fluid to the blood to try and even out the intra and extracellular concentration of solutes. Beyond that, it has a sodium and chloride concentration of 154. Again, supra physiologic, baseline hypernatremic and hyperchloremic in nature. So what's normal about normal saline? Absolutely nothing. Hydrating patients with normal saline comes with its issues, which we'll talk about. For one, in large volume resuscitations, you will increase their sodium by sheer volume given, along with their chloride concentration. Later on, when these patients are in the ICU, uh, need to be diuresed, or in certain surgeries that require diuresis, such as cardiac patients, they can become even more hypernatremic and hyperchloremic as a result of further fluid loss. By the way, all of this will be on a still image that can be seen on the website as well. Large volumes of sodium chloride can also lead to a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, usually at more than 3 to 4 liters of fluid. This acidosis can sometimes compound with patients who may already be sick or septic or exist independently. And we'll talk about it in another video, acidosis, having a number of physiologic implications that can affect both our ICU and our operative patients. Next, we have lactated ringers, sometimes called the surgeon's solution, named because surgeons prefer it because of the lactate in it. Now, lactate's metabolic byproduct in the liver and in the kidneys is bicarbonate. The buffer in our blood and this can help to counteract the acidosis experienced by patients who are going for surgery because they're septic or are bleeding it has a ph of 6.5 oh that's the wrong color sorry ph of 6.5 which is more physiologically normal than ns it has an osmolality of 273 again closer to physiologically normal but it is a hypotonic solution. And this is important because it shouldn't be used in neurosurgery as LR, at least at a theoretical level, what it can do is the blood-brain barrier, which is not read readily permeable to water, when it's disrupted in trauma or with tumors, uh, a hypotonic solution will cause fluids to actually leave the vasculature and move into the surrounding tissue, which can worsen edema, like we said in uh, TBI patients, for example. It has a sodium of 130, and it has a chloride of 109, which is a better electrolyte profile than normal saline. Now, LR has potassium in it, about 4 milliequivalents. For reference, when we're giving a patient potassium for electrolyte disturbances for repletion, in hypokalemia, we're giving 20 or 40 milliequivalents in order to raise the potassium by 0.2 or 0.4, where every 10 milliequivalents raises the potassium by 
So you may hear people say don't use LR in patients with kidney disease, but overall the potassium load is so insignificant it, it really doesn't matter that much. Plus, if we remember, potassium goes up in acidosis because our hydrogen potassium exchangers put in overtime in acidosis to try and decrease the proton burden in the blood in exchange for potassium molecules. But since the solution is more physiologically normal and causes less acidosis than normal saline, again, we don't really worry about hyperkalemia with it. Now, LR also has calcium, and that's to help maintain solution neutrality with blood. This brings up another issue in that LR should not be given in the same line as blood transfusions. Blood products oftentimes contain citrate as a preservative, which can bind and chelate the calcium and lead to hypocalcemia in the patient you're resuscitating. And then, as we mentioned earlier, the solution is named because it has lactate in it as its buffer. As I mentioned before, lactate is converted in the liver and kidneys to bicarb, and the metabolic byproduct will help to buffer any acidosis caused as a result of blood loss during surgery. Now, finally, we have plasmolite and normal sol, and these are newer solutions, and they're even more physiologic than the other two. Uh, we're looking at a pH of about 7.4, which is the same as physiologic pH. It also has an osmolality of 298, again, closer to normal, and a sodium of 140, chloride of 98, and a potassium of 5. But this solution uses magnesium instead of calcium to help maintain electrical neutrality, which avoids the issue of giving it with transfusions as there is no calcium to be chelated by citrate. And the other difference, the last difference, is that rather than lactate, it contains acetate as its buffer. Now acetate is converted by many tissues, not just the liver, not just the kidneys into lactate, which helps make it better, say, in patients with liver or kidney failure, but also helps convert the buffer into bicarbonate faster than lactate. So that's all for our discussion on normal saline, lactated ringers, and plasmolite, some of our most commonly used crystalloid solutions. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or interested in getting involved, please feel free to contact us. Subscribe below, follow us on Instagram for daily content, and stay tuned for the next video. And again, like I said, we're going to have a still chart of this uh, on the website, so please feel free to take a look, print it out if you want.